The following is a fan-made podcast production. The rolled players do not own or have any official involvement in the development and distribution of the Star Trek franchise. Star Trek Adventures is developed by Modiphius Entertainment, and the stories we tell are not to be taken as official Star Trek canon. Accessing Log 9134. Decrypting. Playback commencing. Mm, personal Log Lieutenant Commander to Orly, Stardate 9722.8. In an all too brief period of time, I will be boarding the USS Upraxia as its science officer. Chief science officer, specifically. I suppose this is an honor, though personally it's not exactly where I choose to be. I have purposefully lived a life as far from the chain of command and responsibility over others as I possibly could. Perhaps, then, I am a fool for thinking that after more than a decade in Starfleet I could avoid that forever. Perhaps I am an even greater fool joining Starfleet at all if I wanted nothing to do with its day-to-day operation. All things said, I don't particularly mind being a fool. Frankly, I think Starfleet needs more fools and fewer geniuses. It is so easy for so many here to forget that they are not the average citizens of the universe. I'm not an average citizen either, though, to be an honest hypocrite. I'm certainly not the average choice for a chief science officer. The Enterprise didn't have an aging sociologist in its second seat. I do have a sneaking suspicion as to why the senior staff seat was extended to quiet, unassuming Commander to Orly, of course. I may be a fool, but I am most certainly not unobservant. I have made a career of essay and analysis, of peeling back layers and looking inside, of reminding the left hand of the Federation what its right foot is doing, and doing so publicly. Well, mm, publicly, as long as you are subscribed to a number of esoteric and specific scientific periodicals. Most of what I write is considered to be interesting and thought-provoking not particularly actionable. Thank you for that, Curzon and Dax. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of writing something relevant and apparently actionable. I am, by the standards of most species in the Federation, an old man, and I'm old enough to remember when we went to war with the Klingon Empire. Not that little Organian skirmish Kirk called the war, the actual war, the one that started at the Battle of the Binaries. I was young and naive, sure, but I saw an empire known honestly for its brutal ability and expertise at waging war, and I saw an organization I admired and a government that I trusted that spoke of the values of science and compassion turn to warfare and destruction just as easily and competently as its enemy. And my eyes were opened to a truth that I was not prepared for, but I believe is still true today, that the Federation, Starfleet, the whole bundle, is just as dangerous and deadly as the Klingon Empire, but is just far better or far more willing to hide that. So, natural fool that I am, I said that in about 250 pages, breaking my personal record for word count along the way, and I published it, putting my name to it. In far, far too many words, I said that, and more. I praised the Kittimer Accords as the Federation finally trying to live up to its own principles. I praised the Klingon Empire for being honest about who and what they were to the last. I praised the Kittimer Accords as a chance for two bitter enemies to take a step forward, honestly, together, and to try to make a true peace. I did all that and more, I suppose ink on the page drying on the metaphorical wall of Camp Kittimer. I really should have expected someone to read it this time. I did not expect that. 
that someone to be Captain Spock. So, here I am, Chief Science Officer of the USS Upraxia, or soon to be in a few days. She's a ship with a Klingon officer in a seat of power. A ship captained by an icon of the Federation Old Guard who undoubtedly had more to do with the events at Camp Kinemer than most are aware of. And... me. A tired old Cation, a practicing hypocrite with a mouth that's just a bit too big. Strange days. For the first time in a long time, I'm not sure what happens next. I have no idea how to run a science department. I have no idea what to expect. I am terrified and excited. Maybe it's been too long since I've wondered what was out in the far reaches beyond the hallowed halls of the Federation. Maybe it's time for strange new worlds, strange new people, strange new me. The Rolled Players present Ex Astris, Star Trek Adventures, a real play Star Trek Adventures podcast starring the vocal talents of Courtney St. Gilles, Ian Helmick, Jingwei Patrick Sullivan, Emily Morcos, and Sawyer Payne. Special thanks to Jacqueline Hodgkins for our cover art, Symbol Bird and the Free Music Archive for our theme music, and to you, our listeners. For updates and ways to get involved, please consider following us on Twitter or Patreon, which you can find in this episode's info. Live long and prosper. Thank you.